Hi, everyone. In today's lesson, uh, we have another activity that will model um, exponential growth or decay, decay in this case. Um, so this time we have, uh, in class I had, uh, groups of students have, you know, a handful of coins. They'd count how many they have at the start. Um, and then they would shuffle them or, you know, randomize them in a cup, put them on a table, and then any of their heads go back in the cup and any that aren't heads get set aside. So um, obviously there's a 50-50 chance of heads or tails, and so it's kind of a 50-50 chance of half or so of the coins getting set aside. Um, that's the idea that's kind of obvious from the random chance in the activity. Um, so they did it, and it worked really well. Um, and then I also did in class, I showed this in class as well, just so they can see both versions of things. And plus I had a bunch of students away that day, so they'd be able to do it from my team site. Um, but this uh, digital flipping thing, you could do this activity, um, just like I'll show here. Um, sorry, I'm just going to get into it here. There we go. So the coin flipper, um, you can start with any number of coins you want. So a lot of my students had like 100 coins or 72 coins or whatever. The model I did in class was of 500 coins. And so if you're flipping 500 coins at a time, it does all the dirty work for you and says, okay, we got 243 heads. So that means that in my table here, I have a 500 as a starting value and a 240, it was 41 in class. Is it 41 or is it 43? 43. 243, my second number. And then of course you can just go and change the number of flips, number of coins to 243. Dance back and forth between the computer and the smart board, I guess. Um, 243, so we end up with 107. So you know, I'll just type it by hand. 107. Keep getting up and down here. Um, and then 107. Flip. One of the things that people were surprised at in class is how few trials it took um, in order to end up with no coins. Um, a lot of people are done after five flips, um, but let's just see what happens here for us. So 56 we end up at, and then redo this at 56, end up at 32, so on. And so you're going to do this with just different numbers, so don't start with 500. Um, Flipping here, 15 of them. Get a chance to see your exponential result and analyze it. Um, 15. Flip five of them left. That. Five of them left. And none went from three right to zero. Sometimes a lot of students had, um, uh, we get down to one coin, one, one, one. Uh, this one went to zero. Hopefully, you can't hear the noise in the hallway here. Close the door a little bit. Might have students coming for help at lunch, so I don't want to close it all the way. But anyway, so we have those numbers. Um, and so the next thing I did in class is I wanted to um, graph it. And then having graphed it, if we graph it, so let's change this to 500 at the top here. It's pretty easy. Um, so then we have uh, 100. 200, 300, 400, 500, right? So this is 50, really. 100, 200, 300, 400. And then we had eight flips, which is fine. We'll just use the scale as it was. So we have a dot at 500, then a dot at 243, somewhere around there. 107, somewhere around here. Uh, 356. So 56, a little above the 50. My number actually looks kind of six there, but it's supposed to be 50. Uh, 32, so somewhere a little 
more than halfway. 15. Be pretty low down here. Whatever, it gets a little hard to approximate the numbers. And then, what was it? 15, 5, 3, and 0. So, you have your numbers, and if you put circles around the dots, then when you draw the line that fits the pattern, you can still see where they are nicely. But obviously, we have that, or it actually goes to zero in this case. But if we're modeling this, you'd probably look at that and say, geez, that thing looks pretty exponential. And then the other way we could look at that is in the numbers. So if I look at the numbers here, and I did the 243 divided by the 500, gives me 0.486. So 0 0.486, or 49, really. Uh, 107, 107 divided by the, the 243 equals 0.44. Let's double check that 0 0.440. Yeah, we're good. Uh, 56 divided by 107, 0.523, so just 0.52, I guess. 32 divided by 56. We're just looking for that uh, to see if there's a common multiple along the way, which there certainly pretty much is, 0.57. And I'll show you a trick at the end here too. So the 15 divided by the 32, 0.468, so 0.47. Five divided by, a little bigger drop this time, five divided by 15. What it was, yeah, 5 divided by 15, 0.33. 3 divided by 15, 3, 3 divided by 5, sorry, is 0.6. And then 0 at the end here, but I um, don't really count that one because, yeah, so we have in the end here then, get my mouse out of the way. Um, a bunch of multiples, if we average those, we average those, so we're going to add them up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. So I'm just going to add those up and divide by seven. And so I'll just add them up on a separate calculator here to make it easy. 0 0.486 plus the 0 0.44 plus the 0.52 plus 0.57 plus 0.47 plus 0.33 plus 0.6 gives me 3.416 divided by 7 gives me it's a typo 0 0.488 and so this this matches you know the the 0 0.5 that you'd, need, you'd think it would be in theory, right? Based on the idea of 50, 50 chance of, um, well, 50 percent chance of heads. Oh, jeez, I can't write this morning. All right, so the, the numbers are matching quite nicely that. Um, exponential equations, the other thing for review purposes here is to know that we'd have like an a, b to the x uh, equation, right? Well, in our numbers here, uh, my numbers anyways, I should say, I had a 500 there, and then the 0.5 would go there, right? So the equation should be, uh, you know, the number of coins left should be 500, 0 0.5 to the power of x, right? So what we can do is we can go to GeoGebra, or not GeoGebra, it's Desmos, and we're going to put the numbers in. So I am going to, just to take a picture of those numbers so I can easily enter them in. Quick here, there we go. And I'll just fire those numbers we just got from the coin simulation in. Remember, you go to a table. And so we need zero and then all the way to eight, right? So zero, one, and then it just hit enter, enter, enter. It does it for you, which is nice. Uh, we started with 500 coins, then it went to 243. 
and boom, right to zero at the end. All right? Um, so our graph here, we kind of want it to go from, uh, let's say negative one, so we can see the scale up to, up to eight or nine. So, oops. So this needs to go from like negative one up to eight or nine. So let's just go to nine. So we have a little breathing room at the end on the x-axis. And on the y scale, we want to go from like negative one all the way up to like 500. Okay, so that gives us um, the, a nice view of all of our data. The other thing we can do is we can graph that equation where like y equals 500, 0 0.5. I could use the number we had, which was 0 0.4, yeah, 0.488, but I think it would be pretty obvious if we did a larger sample size, if we did this again and did it again and did it again, on average, we'd probably get really, really close to 0 0.5. So I feel comfortable either using 0 0.5 or the 0.488. You can justify either. Um, so let's use the 0.488 and then we'll take a look and see what it looks like. Uh, and we need to do power of x. So power is that little hat key there, the one that looks like a upside down V. Shift 6 it is. Um, power of x. And you look and be like, wow, that's actually a really good fit, isn't it? And then uh, if we were to compare it, if I used 0.5, right, or 0.488, there's really not much different th difference there. Um, and then the other thing we can do is y1 tilde, the top left key, um, equals 500. This is the theoretical idea, right? So we could use the point for eight. Um, sorry, that's not what I want to do. I want to use A. We're going to ask the computer to generate the initial value and the multiple. And we're still going to do power of x1. And so the computer analyzes the data and says, okay, they think the starting value is 500.42, off very little from what we know it really was. Um, and then 0.478, it, it agreed basically with that 0.48 uh, multiple in our data. So you can see the red line and the black line simultaneously there, and they they both they match really really well. So exponentials are neat because you can you can get the equation of them uh, easier than like what you've seen before with quadratic regressions and stuff like that. They're actually pretty easy to get uh, decent results as you saw here. Okay, so just do that again um, with you know a, a number other than 500 and uh, show your result. I am going to do, I'm gonna put a record into the, into the lesson by taking screenshots. Windows Shift S is a hotkey that changes your life if you need to do screenshots a lot. Windows Shift S, Control V for pasting, all the hotkeys that make life easy. Windows Shift S, copy that that in and so on, but you could just do pictures and, and with your PDF scan, um, scanner, right, the office lens, just scan them and put them as pages in your file. I'm not fussy that. I'm not fussy any beyond that. I'd rather it be easy for you. Just use the office lens and make it nice. So there's your graphs. Actually, let me undo that. Grab the picture here so you can see the one of them's black, one of them's red. You can see them both there. So there's a record of the results from our video lesson and that. Okay. So that's all I want you to do. It just basically uh, prompted us, of course, to review over uh, the form of the equation A times B to the X and the idea of the initial value and the common multiple and just seeing it in action again and seeing that it works really well is pretty sweet. Okay. So that's it for today. If any questions about that, let me know. Um, otherwise, just submit uh, pictures of your pages and your, your screens from Desmos so I know you know how to do it. All right, that's all for now.